I took this photo in Ivory Coast, which is in Africa, a primarily French-speaking country. And it was the second last place on my six-country trip, probably like in day 20, 22 or something like that. And this photo just uh, means a lot to me because being there, I was the youngest on the charity side in terms of the people I was working with. But I wasn't too far off in age from the kids in the camp. Masai, the person who created the camp, which is called Giants of Africa, while he was speaking, I was a student, and I was taking in everything he was saying because all the stuff he was saying to the kids was just as valuable to me. And But because I'm a bit older, I'm a bit more mature with the information I was taking in. When I would see the kids like messing around and not, not listening to what he said, I'm like, yo, come on. Like, Did you not just hear what he said? There's the language barrier, but through the action and just the way you present it, the, the message is conveyed. This, this image rings strong to me because it's a connection I made with people off of sport. And I remember, especially in Ivory Coast, there was a time where I was just walking, dribbling a ball, and I was like, man, I never thought as a 10-year-old kid who wanted basketball to be a big part of his life, I never thought that I would be in Africa with a basketball in a camp. Because, and then I think about being 12 and reading Slam Magazine and not knowing what a camera was because no one would ever introduce that to me, and that's why it's so important to me to be able to do that, introduce these things to kids earlier on. I would look at magazines and I was like, I'd be like, man, I want to come up with the idea for the cover. But never occurred to me to take the photos because I didn't know anyone with a professional camera. I didn't know that you could have a job as a photographer. I just knew that I loved basketball. And in this country, it really, it really like hit home for me. Abu, he was probably like 12 or 13. And I just saw him walking off. And I was like, damn, that looks like the 12-year-old me. That looks like the 12-year-old me with a basketball in a dream. And I didn't want to just let him walk away because he wasn't able to play in the camp. He was too young for it. And it just reminded me of me being 12. And there was days probably when I was 12 walking home with the basketball. And I had, like, all these dreams, but I also had all these doubts. And sometimes, you know... I imagine, like, it would be cool if when I was 12, someone just, like, walked up to me and tried to, like, get to know me and and be there for me. So I saw that as an opportunity to do that and didn't speak to each other. We just, I taught him how to spin a ball on his finger, I taught him how to dribble the ball between his legs in, like, a sequence, and it was just all smiles, and we became friends, and we just hung out for, like, the next three days. This is the first time I went to Cuba. Since then, I've gone back twice because I just love the energy there. Again, a place where you you don't speak the same language as them, but you get along just fine just based off the energy. My favorite part about Cuba is the access to internet and it being such a challenge that you kind of just say, forget it, I'm going to just experience this, leave my phone inside. And I'll go for like a week at a time and just not use my phone, put it in my bag. And it's so refreshing to kind of think and be in this place where those 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 down moments where you where you kind of just relax in thought and you're not really thinking about anything. And in, in today's day and age, what we usually do when that happens is we pick up our phone and just start scrolling, looking at stuff. And we might be presenting ourselves information, but are we really taking it in? Uh, who knows? But you can't do that. You can't do that when that happens over there. And it just gives you this new understanding for people and the way they carry themselves. And you start to observe different things outside of you and inside of you. And every time I go there, I feel like I come back a new person. These are some kids that we met while they were playing a bigger game of soccer. And they were just kind of messing around in the, in the like off portion of... Right behind me, right behind where I'm taking a photo, it's like a huge game of soccer going on. This is just like a wall nearby where the kids are messing around climbing up the climbing up the log and stuff and the kid saw me and said, like, yo, I'm gonna take a picture 
and then I waited for the right moment, and then I, I snapped the shot. I would say that it, it touches a personal point for me because when I got this photo back, I, it reminded me of photos I've seen from some of my favorite photographers that I admire and look up to, and I'm not saying it's at the same level, but it felt like, you know, based on where I was the year before, and to produce that, I'm getting closer to the people I admire. It's just personal for me in that sense, and it makes me think about just everything, progress, growth, and how much more in tune I am when I don't have my phone on me all the time. And that's that's probably what, what, what it means the most, the photo and just the fact that it's a positive sign that I'm heading in the right direction. So I took this shot in Varanasi, which is in India. It's the, ho the holiest place in India, and it's right by the water. Varanasi was this interesting place because even in the body of water we're, we're on the boat in, it's called the Ganga, the Ganges River. And they they put dead bodies in there. You know, that, that body, that body of water is a place for the the living and the dead, they view life and death as the same thing. They're cremating numerous bodies a day right by the water, and you can visibly see it if you want to. So it's just interesting to see that contrast of real life and energy, and then seeing the other side of it, death. It just opens your eyes to know that it's like the same thing because they go hand in hand. And with this, it was just a moment where we saw some kids having fun. And again, I just took a couple pictures and this was the best one that came from it. Uh, the kid jumped off of his friend's shoulders. I guess I just tried to wait for the right moment to, to catch a shot. Yeah, so with this photo, I was actually I like a kendo practice. The more I visit Japan, the more I want it, or like divulge into the culture and learn more about it. I saw from someone else, they posted a photo and I tried to figure out what that support was and I found out it was kendo. So my goal on that trip was like, oh, I gotta see kendo, I gotta see what it's all about. So one of the last days I was able to experience a kendo practice and they were comfortable with me taking photos and for the first little bit, I just watched it. There's there's so many practices that take such a level of humility to, to perfect and master because you could be so good at something and if nobody's watching, why do you, what is it about? You must care about it a lot to still do it, right? So with that, it's like, Damn, I just had a respect for the entire process and the entire practice. And then at the end, when everyone was wrapping up, I saw I saw this guy sweeping the floors and making sure it was clean. The way his posture was, he just he fully dedicated himself to, to sweeping the place he calls home. And it just I just connected with that. And even before I, I got the photo back, when I got my, my shit developed, when I got back, I, I knew it was something I looked forward to seeing when I saw it. I was, I really connected with it and I said, just wrung something with me because the same way he put that effort and energy into sweeping with like the right posture and the right attentive mindset, it just reminded me that I should be doing the same thing with what I do. I mean, with the M6, there's a lot of times where photos will be out of focus. Um, technically speaking, too, I had to put my, my stuff at like a higher ISO. I pushed my film to take this photo. But I mean, that's that's another thing, too. Like you get lucky, you know, when you when you get a photo on that camera, you know, it's you and it's not the camera. And that's kind of why when I do travel, and I'm just experiencing it like I want to fully be connected with it. And that's the camera I'm going to travel with because it's light, it's easy to use. And I know that whatever I bring back is a representation of where I'm at skill wise. So. If you've never been to a kendo practice, walking in, 
you see him getting ready very serious once it gets started you know there's yelling heavy hits it takes a lot to to be good at it and you just right away you just got a, a new sort of respect for anyone doing anything on that level especially dudes who are like in their 30s and 40s just really good at it and it's just an admirable trait and just watching it I was excited yeah it's just a it's just a whole experience where you can appreciate what's in front of you man this this photo I took when I was in Washington actually supposed to be doing a job for Nike but the the talent didn't show up something happened on there and personally LeBron before shoes would come out they would they would get s certain celebrities to wear them before they came out and then like different blogs are showing them like there was one day where Kevin Hart was wearing the wheat the wheat LeBron ones I don't know if you saw that and I took the photo of that before it came out they posted and a similar situation was supposed to happen that game but the talent didn't show up so I got to sit in their seat court side and just watch the game with my camera. And the game was crazy. Washington with Beal and Wall, you know, they got that young dynamic of really talented players. They they had the lead for the most part of the game. Cavs came back, got the lead again. But then Wizards kind of, you thought the game was done because Bradley Beal had like a big three. Crowd is going crazy. But there's something about LeBron and his greatness and just the energy he brings into a place. You just kind of believe anything can happen. And for some reason that day, I felt like something was going to happen. And you see Kevin Love on the other side of the court just, just throw a lob. And if you know Kevin Love, you know like he's one of the best full court passers in the league. So I'm like, LeBron's catching this. LeBron catches it, turns around. And before he shoots... I said, I got to take this picture, but I need to see if the shot goes in. So I took one picture, and then I put my camera down just to see if it went in. It went in. I went crazy. I got to experience the game as a fan, and I got to take one photo when I could have burst, you know? So it felt good. When I think about it now, too, it's just crazy that I was able to experience it as a photographer and as a fan, and then it kind of increased my appreciation for... Uh, just NBA photographers in general because they keep they keep the camera on their eye the whole time. And I mean, realistically, I probably should have took more photos, but it takes constraint to just, like, take the photo and stick to your job, you know what I mean? So luckily it wasn't my job that day, and I just got to have fun, and I, I got something really cool out of it.